Welcome back to the Michigan Business Speed, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. Chris Holman here, and we're coming to you from the Grand Hotel, which is where the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce holds their annual policy conference. And who's more in the middle of policy than small business, right? So we have Brian Kelly here. He's the CEO of the Small Business Association of Michigan. Good to have you here, Brian. How are you doing? Great to be with you. Yeah, thank you very much. Can't, couldn't be better on, on uh, I was a day a day like today, the weather that we've had in the islands. I've been coming here since uh, 2007, and I don't remember no weather as good as this. Chris, I love this. I love running and this like kind of crisp morning. Yep. No nice. humidity. Uh, Perfect. And sunny. And but sunny. Cool. Yes. So when you walk up that hill, you're not a sweat ball when you get up here. That's, right. That's the other thing, right? It's beautiful. All right. So a lot of policy work going on here. And this is uh, Christmas for all of us who want to affect policy or at least get feedback on it. What What are the issues in small business right now? What are you going to be working on? Well, there's a there's so many different needs, but there's a lot of defense these days. So I'd start there. Uh, there's two areas where uh, over the last year and a half or so, we've really been trying to to not lose ground. First is independent contractors. So solopreneurs, it's a it's a truly an outlier in, um, in Michigan small business growth in the last 20 years, according to our scorecard. The, the rise of the solopreneur, the rise of, uh, of, of just a self-employed person, and they have higher income than the national average of self-employed people here in Michigan. It's, it's a great thing. Don't squash that by limiting independent contractor rules. The other thing is, uh, is small businesses compete for talent based on flexibility. Uh, being able to offer flexible hours, flexible working conditions, and people allowing people to fit their life into their or fit their work into their life instead of fitting their life into their work. You know that's a it's a um, it's it's a really important part of competing for talent, and um, and so to try to keep the government out from in between the employer employee relationship. Mm-hmm. That the more that that's rigid and has to be done in a very specific way, the less flexibility plays. Um, into the hands of larger operations that are very uniform and maybe can offer a little enhanced benefit or a little enhanced uh, pay, but less, less flexibility. Smaller businesses that are giving a little more authority, a little more experience, a little more flexibility. And, um, and so that's, those are two things that a lot of the folks that they think they're helping by passing laws to, you know, more laws and creating more rules. But to the entrepreneur, it's just adding one more thing and a 500 other things that they have to do. Well, and it's been an unfair competitive advantage uh, for bigger business for talent anyway. Along with, they can pay more, there's more benefits, et cetera, et cetera. Um, To take away the few things that give us tools to make it attractive to work for small business is is really a a huge step backwards. It it is, especially when you consider the perfect storm of of our our population concerns here. Yeah, we just don't have enough people. So, when you put we stack on top of that uh, in, an already difficult competitive situation, make it a little bit harder. Uh, so that it's really the reason why we we do on these policy issues. We focus so much on trying to maintain flexibility in the employer employee relationship, so that it can be tailored to the needs of the employee and the employer. That uh, helps small businesses a, little, a lot. Um, oftentimes we um, we like when we ask our our, uh, our members like. Mm-hmm. What what do you need? The most common or popular answer is stay out of my way. No. Yeah, and it, and it has been since 1776. I yes. think. Right? Yeah, right. regulation has always been in the top five things right. that business finds as an encumbrance. You know, I I know that you guys survey your membership a lot. We do our semi annual, which by the way, the Michigan Future Business Index is in the field now. Great. So go online, fill that out because it's valuable uh, information. But talent has been there the last uh, now four and a half years. And I'm, I'm wondering, I, I know that you are also uh, a member, SPAM is, of the National. Uh, what, what are we doing with immigration reform? Is there anything happening there? You know, immigration reform has been the, um, has been like this uh, seemingly un- unattainable um, goal over years, and it's it's most unfortunate because, like here in Michigan, where we have we've had refugees um, coming into Michigan and immigration coming into Michigan over decades, and it's a huge part of the small business community, the um, and a huge uh, benefit. But last year, so our population grew last year, 
if you take immigration and refugees out of that mix, we would have shrunk. Yeah. But the only reason we grew is because we had immigration. So, but it gets mixed up in Washington. They mix it up with border security. And that's a different thing. It is. So, um, and so when they mix it all up, it gets tangled. It come, becomes political. It, but immigration, immigration policy, the idea that we, we need to attract and, and invite in the best talent from around the world is, um, is so important. It's it's really the key. If you're to look to our north, by the way, what a great example. Look to Toronto, um, and uh, and what Canada has done. Like in the U.S., where we people get educated here, and then like we make them leave. Yeah. And um, in what in what uh, Canada's immigration policy has changed to is to say, hey, U.S. graduates, you want to stay in North America? So look at the way that uh, that the, that that province has grown in yeah. Canada. It rivals our highest growth states like Florida and uh, in Texas over the last five years. Yeah. Uh, in the especially in the Toronto area, but that whole um, Canadian province is on the other side of the Detroit River has really had impressive growth. It's it's crazy stuff. I wish we had ours. Uh, we're out of time, unfortunately, but thanks for the good work you do on behalf of small business. We appreciate it. Likewise, Chris. Thanks. All right, buddy. Good to talk to you. Brian Callow, the CEO of the Small Business Association of Michigan, joins me here at the Grand Hotel, and that's because the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce is having their annual policy conference here. You're watching the Michigan Business Beat on the Michigan Business Network. I'm Chris Holman. We'll be back with more.